G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, that last video I did where I made up this mount for the hill to rotary tool, it worked out really good. Everything was great, perfect almost. And uh, anybody who was watching the video would think, geez, you know, Rob's got that bloody workshop humming along, nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, right, things do go wrong, but I don't often show them on the on the uh, the video unless it's something spectacular worthy of note and as you know anybody that's ever worked in a workshop knows things are going to go pear-shaped at some stage of the game and in this case i was wire buffing all that heavy rust off this you know and i had gloves on you would have seen gloves and apron and eye protection and everything wire buffs are potentially dangerous and a number of times that things will catch in a wire buff and fly off into the air and I would go off into Never Never, never, never Land, like, you'll never find that, that part again. Well, if you do, it'll be 20 years later, and you'll, you think, gee, there's that part I lost 20 years ago. That's where it went. In this case, uh, yeah, this caught on the, the grinder, uh, you know, the white buff, and it got airborne at a humongous rate of knots. I'll show you what happened. What happened was, I was using the white buff here. It snagged on the white brush and the guard, tore out of my hands, flew up at a million mile an hour, hit this, blue, this green cabinet, drill cabinet, knocked all the magnets off of that, went flying back this way, hit back here somewhere, ricocheted back and finished up at the back of the grinder up here again. So that's how much force there was involved in it, you know. Uh, I mean, it's very rare for bits to fly back at you. Generally, the stuff will fly away because as the the brush is going down this way it will always come down and hit on the bench and then shoot off somewhere so anyway I got the uh, I got the bit back and I finished it off and went back put it down on the bench and that's when I had the WTF moment okay I'll show you a shot of the bench just prior to the accident happening and see if you can guess what the flying mount hit out of everything on the bench. Yep, it's going to be the most expensive thing, the most fragile thing, and yep, it was a million to one chance, or maybe it was a zillion to one chance, but it was. The digital micrometer the fantastic digital micrometer that I got from uh, Banggood and been using ever since. It's just such a wonderful thing. Direct hit. I mean, it could have hit anywhere on the micrometer if it's going to hit it, but it had to hit 100% right on the screen. Smash that to bits. The thing still turns on. It still works, but it's uh, it's got serious issues. There's some... some rubbing grating going on inside but I mean this is tough Chinese look at it's still zeros look at that how's that for accuracy after that huh. it hit it so hard it smashed the screen and it even partly popped one of these screws up so now yeah what can you do I mean that's I just looked at it and went, what the f... Yeah, you can guess what I said. I mean, it was more sad incident than... I was just like, wow, no, like, this is such a good thing. And this has happened. I mean, you know, if good and bad luck's like yin and yang, well, they're probably out of balance. I'm sure I get <laughs> lots more bad luck than good luck in the workshop at times. So now we've got this poor thing, which is... Well, in bad shape. So what do you do? Well, I immediately thought oh, I'll have to buy another one. I really like this. And I thought this is worth buying another one of these. And then I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll ask Banggood for that other one they had because they have two of these micrometers. They had this soil, which was the more expensive one. They had a cheaper one, which I liked and was never going to review. And one thing I liked about it, it had the same size display as this. It didn't have the uh, the analog vernier. It just 
it's just digital. But on the on the back where this has got this locking lever, which I really don't like, I've never liked that because I've always used my Mitsu Toyo stuff, and they always have them on the front. This cheaper one has got the locking lever on the front, and I thought, what the hell? I'll see if Banggood will send me another one for appraisal, and we can do a review and pull this apart, and look inside, and get a few videos out of it. So that's what I've done. Uh, they've sent me one over, so that's on the way, so I'll be reviewing the other digital micrometer. But in the meantime, you know, this just shows you the sort of shit that happens in workshops at times. It's, it's unbelievable, you know. If it's going to hit anything on the bench, you know, it could have hit anywhere, but it had to hit right on the damn display. It just yeah, it depressed me greatly. Okay, um, I suppose while we're here, we might as well take the top off and have a look. I did look to see on the internet, see if you could get replacement faces, you know, like, but, because I thought I, at one stage I saw somebody selling them, but nah, it's not going to happen. I looked everywhere and, I mean, the only thing you can do with this is possibly take out the glass and get a new piece of, get a piece of clear perspex and put that in there, you know, glue it in. Maybe that would salvage it. As it is, it's pretty horrible. And of course, it's dragging too. It hasn't affected the accuracy, but it's dragging inside. Something's not right. So, okay, let's open this thing up and see what's in there. So, the first thing we'll do is take the battery out. take the front off. These are Phillips heads, but I don't have a Phillips head that size, but this little flat blade one will, will do the job, I think. Yeah, they're coming out. That's all right. Quite often I'll just... I was not sure. It's, these are probably not Phillips head. These are probably those Japanese top screws. I don't know, anyway, they're coming out. So. Yeah, it really depressed me when that happened, because I really do like this. This is a, it's a fabulous, you know, digital micrometer. Really easy to read and dead accurate. Good, great repeatability. It's about $65, you know, Australian, it's not, I mean, it's way cheaper than a Mitsu Toyo, but it's still, uh, it's still a fair amount of money, you know, to just ride off. If I can't fix it, the glass, I'll just gut the electronics and just use it as a, um, as an analog, analog job, you know. Talk about bad luck. Okay. Okay. Get these little screws. Right. Okay. to come back when I've got this open, I think. Alright, well this comes back this way. Let me see what's in there. Little circuit board. It's the battery holder. Some little see it's uh, 
It's stiffer than it used to be. Hmm, let's see if I can take this glass cover off. Well, there's two little screws that hold. Whoops. This little uh, bridging strip onto the uh, other portion. There's a screw gone. There it is. So now we can work on this bit. See if we can salvage, you know, anything. See if we can repair it. If I can't, well, I'll just make a little cover up and put it over here and just use it as a analog but um mm, we'll see right well i've got some screws out of here and i can now take this off you can see it's got proper little contacts doesn't use those horrible rubbery sort of joining strips oh hang on maybe there is one there i have to be careful of that so yeah Put that over here. Now it's a matter of trying to pull this apart. Well, with a bit of luck, I might even be able to salvage this. I'm not sure. The um, yeah, it uses those little contact strips. They can be real bastards to get back again to work properly. You didn't touch those or the mating surface on here. But the glass, which is all stuffed, I may be able to take that out and replace it so that's the plan I'll, I'll give it a go this will either work or it wasn't won't work it, um, it's just a matter of glue something in there which oh look at it that she comes that she comes it is proper glass I might be able to put a bit of clear something else in there Oh well, that's the thing. We'll have to we'll have to try and make a replacement glass for it, which I think could be doable. If I can do that, well, she'll be operational again. So as this glues in from the outside, I'll clean this up. I'll put it all back together and see if it still works after my fiddling with it. And if it does, I'll just cut a piece of plastic to fit in from the outside because it does push in from the outside and just just glue it in. You know that way. I, you know, if I put it back together and it doesn't work, well, it's pointless. Go to all that trouble. I might as well just put a cover over the outside and use it as a as an analog uh, micrometer. If I can put it back together and it still works, well then I, I can yeah, just make up a new window and stick it in with a bit of glue. That's the plan. Oh, right, she's back together. I shouldn't have taken this little bridge off. I should have just taken out that screw, that screw, and that screw. Okay, one, two, three, four screws. That lets that come off, and then you can get to the, the little. You can get to the to the face plate and clean it up. Anyway, I pulled it totally apart, didn't touch any of the contacts, got it back. Hopefully it'll be alright, but yeah, if anybody pulls one of these apart, don't take that rail off. Um, let's put it back again and see if it works. Whoa, moment of truth. Moment of truth. You can see it looks a lot better, you know. Uh, it would you could use it without the glass, which is a possibility too, because uh, you've got the glass 
uh, lens there anyway, so see what happens. So it's all back together. But will it work? I mean, my track record for delving into the electronic things, um, playing them with their innards is not great. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. It works. Who would have believed that after I played with it? Oh, how about that, huh? Should wipe the anvils off, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's turned out okay. So the other thing to do now is put a new piece of glass or perspex in there. I do think about just using a bit of plastic perspex, but the trouble is that scratch is too easy. And then I was laying in bed last night thinking maybe I could just get an old tablet or, you know, uh, mobile phone and cut the, a piece out of the, um, the glass screen, protector screen on one of those, you know. And then I was thinking, oh, you know, like in my previous job as a brain surgeon, uh, you know, we used microscopes a lot. And that was before I was a nuclear uh, physicist, of course. Um, yeah, no, you've got to believe me. I, you know, would I lie to you guys? And I mean, anyway, we use these microscopes like covers, and like here's one here from when I was, you know, doing the job, you know, like honest. So I tried this thing out to see if it fits, and would you believe it's absolutely perfect width wise. How arsy is that? All it needs is to be scribed and snapped off, and we're good to go. And I just stick it in with a bit of uh, super glue. They had sort of silicony stuff, but I. I think it'd be pretty tricky to get silicon in there without oozing it everywhere. Whereas a bit of super glue would, um, would I think, do the job nicely. So I haven't got a, I haven't got a diamond tip scribe. I've only got one of those old glass cutters with the wheel, you know, and they're pretty primitive. So I've ordered a, uh, a diamond tip scribe from Banggood, my own money. They're only like two dollars fifty, you know, and it, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't see myself doing a review of a scribe. I mean, how basic can you get? So anyway, that's on the way, and when it arrives, I'll just trim that off and put it back together, and job done. Should be as good as new again. So, I mean, how would you be? Eh? Isn't that incredible? What a stroke of luck! So anyway, it goes to show you maybe the yin and yang thing is even, and uh, good luck and bad luck. When you look at look at it, <laughs> it probably are about the same ratio. Anyway, that's it for me. Just shows you, you know what can happen in the workshop and yeah we get to look inside one of these little suckers and see how it all hangs together so until next time um yeah that's it from me see you around cheers